Hello, and welcome to the Scottish Summit. Thank you so much for taking time to attend my session, a 15-minute digital transformation. Before we begin, a special thanks to all of our sponsors for making this event possible. Thank you. My name is Norm Young, and I'm a Microsoft MVP coming to you from St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. So what the heck is a digital transformation? It means something different to almost everyone. You hear it thrown around with terms like big data, cloud, and modern teamwork, but could digital and technological advances really have an impact on your work? In this session, I'll show how it's possible to digitally transform a manual process into a modern online solution where the resources are centralized and manual tasks are automated. Best of all, you don't need IT, and you already have the tools that you need. SharePoint and Power Automate will be showcased using out-of-the-box functionality and a no-code maker approach to digital transformation. Lists are great for storing and collaborating on business data for teams. When combined with the dozens of Power Automate triggers and actions, SharePoint and Lists become a legitimate solution platform for pro devs and makers alike. When there is no app for that scenarios, SharePoint, Lists, and Power Automate can be used to develop solutions when processes are left behind from large enterprise application or ERP implementations. I'm not suggesting that a list is a database. They should not be used for highly complex workloads, but they should be used when users and business processes have opportunities to add value through centralization and automation. Our scenario is based on a situation that I encountered working in higher education. A university exchange agreement process is managed by a single user from an Excel spreadsheet on their desktop PC, and unfortunately, some of these agreements have accidentally expired in the past. This is a 100% manual process with zero insights for others. The catalyst for change has always been a larger team coming in to help and they're wanting new ways of working. We work with our team and we understand their requirements. We know that they need reminder messages ahead of the agreement expiration, so they have an opportunity to intervene and start that renewal process prior to expiration. They want to assign different owners to share the workload, and they want the ability to view and share status updates. The team would also like some basic insights by country, some simple inbound and outbound student headcount totals, and the ability to quickly view expired agreements. Let's get straight into our demos. And we're going to start by creating a new digital home for our users that are new to SharePoint and they're new to Microsoft 365. And we're going to do that by building up their solution using a SharePoint site. This will be the anchoring point for them to get started. I'm going to click Create Site. I'm going to use a team site and I'm going to call this Scottish Summit 2021. Check the name. We're all good there. I'm just going to edit the URL. I must have done this already. Scottish Summit. There. Now we have a unique URL and we've got the site name. I'm going to click Next. So this Office 365 group, as it's being created, and we'll also see later in the demo with Power Automate, these will be the two components that are the glue that will bind our solution together. So our site is now provisioned. And so the next thing we're going to do is take that Excel spreadsheet from our single user bring it into our site, and convert it into a Microsoft list. It's a very easy process with all of these modernization efforts that have been coming to uh, lists and SharePoint in the last year. Uh, I have my uh, spreadsheet. I'm going to upload it, and I have to make one simple change to this base spreadsheet for use in lists. I'll open it, and I simply have to convert the columns and the rows into a table. Uh, I'll select the first, excuse me, select the first cell, and I'll format it as table. Very simple operation. It goes under the assumption that you have it, you know, properly formatted and in, in, in with consistent data and the data is clean and the columns make sense and there's no static. But the, the point is, 
It's simple change. Now that my Excel table uh, is created, I'm going to go back to my site and I'm going to import this Excel spreadsheet as a new list. This is new functionality that has landed this year. In the past, you would have to use some weird SharePoint app and an old version of Internet Explorer to do the import. Now we get this updated modern uh, experience where you can create a list uh, traditionally from blank, you know, create the columns as you go from an existing point or an existing list, excuse me, where you can reference other lists that have been built in your organization. Or you can start with one of these excellent templates. But for our purposes, we're trying to short circuit the process. I'm going to use Excel. I'm going to highlight the file that we just updated and formatted as a table. And we'll see, because we formatted it as a table, it's able to understand most of the schema that's present within the table and the sheet. So we see that the first column, it's called School, and it's showing up as Title in SharePoint. Title in SharePoint Talk is simply the, the default column that comes, and sometimes it's used as a primary key. We'll leave it as is because that makes sense. We see the second column is called exchange type and it's being interpreted as a single line of text. But as you look at the data, you see that most of this has a consistent look, consistent data. It's just repeated. This would make a better choice as a choice column. We'll do that. We go to the next column. We see creation date. It's this weird Excel number. It's not coming in right. So we'll format this as date and time. When we come out of this import, we will get rid of the times that are created on there because it's not necessary at this point. And I'll scroll over and I will see that numbers for dates will convert. Uh, end date will turn that to a date. Uh, owner. This one is very, very important to anything that we do where we're wanting to leverage all of the goodness that comes in Azure Active Directory about us. There's no concept of a person or a user in the the Excel import into lists. So we're going to change that manually after we've done the import. So for now, uh, there's, we're going to keep it just as a single line of text and address that later. Duration, total students, balance, these are all numbers and that's all fine. We'll scroll over to the right and we see that we have country and city and these would probably make good choice columns as well. We click next. We have the opportunity to give it a business friendly name. So we'll call it exchange. We'll ensure that it's going to show in the left navigation and click create. And while that's spinning, I'm going to have another sip of coffee. And just like that, our data has been taken from the spreadsheet, moved into a list, and we're able to like get up and running. I said that I wanted to remove the times from the date fields. They're just not necessary to this business process and they add extra text that my users don't need to consume or worry about. So to make this very simple change, I'm going to click the menu, go down into column settings and do an edit. And I'm doing this from the front end. This was a uh, an option that had to be performed in list settings. List settings is still a thing. We'll be using it later in the demo. But for me and users to be able to come in and make these changes quickly on the front end is a, a nice experience that allows me to, to work further. And so we've got our data. We've got our new digital home. But our digital home is a bit cluttered for new users to SharePoint and Microsoft 365. So we're, we're going to do a bit of a cleanup here. But the cleanup is, is, is intentional. I want to have a simplicity of design in everything in the solution so I can decrease the delivery time and hopefully increase user adoption. So I'm going to remove the clutter and I'm going to make this a little more purpose built and tailored to my user. So I'm deleting these web parts. This doesn't affect any functionality within the site. I'm just making my user experience the best that I can possibly make it for my users knowing that they're new to this Microsoft 365 and SharePoint experience. I'm going to paste in a very simple message telling them the purpose of the site. But to complement that, I want to add a button, a button that will point them straight back to their list that they will have the easiest frictionless access to their work. And so I'm configuring this now and I'll call it exchange. And I'll paste in the link I just copied from the left rail. And I'll make one other change while I'm here. This is more to showcase some of the functionality that exists uh, with modern SharePoint. I'm able to format section colors and layouts and all of this type of stuff that normally would have to be handled with 
customizing master pages, I'll republish this. And uh, I will also change more of the look and feel to be uh, uh, in keeping with my users' working styles and personalities. I will uh, give the uh, the background on the, the header a bit of a bold statement. I'll make it a standard width. I'll come out of here. Uh, they tell me they're big fans of teal, so we'll change the theme to teal. And just like that, we've personalized the site. We've configured the site to look like the users. There's no technical debt here. I've simply made some changes through configuration. And now I'm going through this one-time effort to strip out things that are unnecessary for my users. Again, I want to increase delivery time and I want to have a lower barrier to adoption. They come to this site. They know what it's for. It's for them. It's for managing exchange agreements. They have a simple button to click. They don't have to worry about the left navigation. There's no noise to this site. It is purpose built for this team. You'll notice on the left hand column, it says convert to Microsoft Teams. So as our team matures, as our team wants to go into new opportunities, this Office 365 group that we built from the SharePoint site can grow with them. And it is almost a future proof container and platform to build upon within Microsoft 365. And so we've understood our business processes and now we want to reflect the process inside of our list and to add some value where we can. So one of the nice features about a SharePoint list is its familiarity to business users. It very much has this Excel experience um, you know, I'm very fortunate. I have a, a widescreen monitor and I could, I could see everything on this list without too much bother. But not everyone has that luxury. And we see that most of our columns, uh, don't really fit on the page. So this very simple, neat feature that came, uh, to, to SharePoint and lists in the last year is to expand the content and to explode this view to capitalize on all the real estate that we have on the screen. It's not life changing, but it does add to the user experience. So, my users want to have a, a quick ability to understand the current state of any one agreement. And so we're going to accomplish that by creating a status column. I'm going to insert a new column from the front end. I don't have to go into list settings for these types of operations. I'm going to call it status. And this new feature landed within the last six months and we can uh, format the columns at the, at the, the, the point of creation. So this one is, um, uh, active and I'll change the color to be green and I'll make this one expired and this one will be red and this type of uh, visual attention uh, helps users prioritize the information that's on the screen uh, I'll go into this you can hear my dog in the background I'll go into this uh, grid view experience and I will select one as active. And because I'm in Excel, uh, this Excel mode, I will simply drag and drop all of my columns and do a quick backfill. Hopefully you're noticing on the left-hand column, these green vertical bars. This indicates that the, the row transaction has committed. You may have noticed it spinning. That means it was in the process of the commit. So this is something new that's come with this, this grid view experience. Excellent. So now we have a view and a quick access into uh, uh, what is active and what is expired. Please forgive my dog. She's a bit crazy in the brain sometimes. And today is clearly the day. Right. Here we are. We're going to look at the owner column. Like I said earlier, it was that single text uh, string. And we can't leverage this information in a meaningful way or a consistent way inside of the uh, Power Automate, and you see that I don't have any option to convert this, so I'm going to delete it and start over. And I'll delete this column. There we go. I'm going to insert another column. This time we're going to use a person field, and this will be owner. And the person field is able to uh, leverage the information that's stored in Azure Active Directory. For example, I can get my display name my email address, my claims information, and all of that type of info. I'm going to do a backfill. Uh, in the real world, you would probably have a, a list of different owners, but for the case uh, of this demo, I'm just using the same person, which is me, and I'm just doing a simple drag and drop. And then we'll probably see this uh, working on it, committing the transaction, spinning on the left-hand side. 
So I've put in my name, it has to resolve it on each entry, and so this is why it's taking a little bit of time, but that's all good. So the change is committed, I'll exit back out, and now I have an owner. And we'll see that as I hover over it, it's already able to grab my, uh, my, my people information, if you will, about my entry. One of the other requirements that our users came to us with is to say, we would like the ability to view see uh, and share updates amongst the team. So we're going to achieve that by adding a simple comments field. We're going to use the multiple lines of text. We'll call it comments. And we're going to click more options. There's a few things that we need to pay attention here. If you desired, you would have the ability to allow them to use rich text. So think of like bold, underscore, italicized, so on, hyperlinks, or append changes to existing text. The append changes to existing text is very important in this context. If we have it, we preserve the lineage of all of the comments. If we didn't, we'd be simply overwriting the last person's comment. So we don't see the history of the activity. So we'll ensure that this is done. A new feature that landed in the last month is that the append changes to existing text has the versioning required built and set by default now inside of Microsoft List. If you create a new list, versioning will be turned on by default, and that is a great step forward for Microsoft. So just by understanding the business requirements and creating some uh, additional columns to reflect the business process, we are able to improve the process. So I want to find opportunities to add value to the, the list and the process. You will notice the total students column and the balance column are simple uh, math equations uh, of, uh, of addition and subtraction. And so what we're going to do is uh, stop having the users manually put those values in and we'll use a SharePoint calculated column to replace it on the fly so they never have to worry about it again. There's no ability to convert it so what we'll do is we'll delete total students and then we'll do the, the same to uh, balance and we'll delete this as well. And we're going to go into the list settings experience to create these columns. Near the bottom, it says create column. And we're going to do our first one, and this one's going to be called total students. And we ensure that we select calculated column. And this calculation will be based on existing uh, column values. And our very simple formula will be equals the inbound column plus the outbound column. And we'll ensure that it's formatted as a number and we'll click OK. Same treatment, but this time we'll do it for the balance. Uh, calculated column. Our formula reads equals inbound minus outbound this is a very simple calculation. You can put more advanced calculations in these calculated columns, but there are some limitations that are, are worth uh, reading up on before you uh, go down the, the path of calculated columns for everything. And so I will click home, I'll go to my exchange list, and I'll view the columns and see the calculated values for me. Total students and balance they're calculated on the fly. It would be more meaningful to my users if these columns were moved over by the inbound outbound columns. So I have this awesome new feature where I can essentially drag and drop columns around in my list view and it saves it without me having to do anything. So we've added columns, we've uh, rearranged columns, and now we're going to take a quick moment to look at the SharePoint new edit form. Because we were creating uh, additional columns, you'll notice that they're listed at the bottom of the, uh, the, the field. So what I'm going to do is to edit them and reorder them in a way that makes sense for my users. So we see that uh, we've created an owner column and to make it in line with the, uh, the, uh, the, the list, we're going to have it just under the end date and we'll also see the status. This is very important. We're going to stick that in the top three. And all of the other ones look fine. Uh, the total students and the balance, these are the calculated columns that we create. There should be no need for our users to manipulate the data there. So I'm going to uncheck these. I'll click Save. And our form has been updated. 
uh, free rewind uh, uh, over a year ago. This would only be possible by customizing in Power Apps. Power Apps and the rest of the Power Platform are awesome, but not every user wants to take on developing uh, those Power App skills to make this very simple change. So it's it's a tip of the hat to Microsoft for making this because it brings down the barrier of customization through configuration. So that is now set. Excuse me. <clears throat> Our user said they want to have some simple insights by geography. And we're going to accomplish that by creating a new SharePoint list view. I'm going to go back into list settings. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to create a new view. And I'm going to base it on an existing view. There's no point in reinventing the wheel with these things. I'm going to give it a new name. This one's going to be called Geography. And I'm going to scroll down. We're keeping everything the way it was. But the point that I want to call out is this group by function. I'm going to expand it. And I'm just simply going to group by the country. And then the city. And so this grouping will allow our users to view their data in a consolidated way, and they can get simple insights and counts. We can see that um, we have two exchange agreements with our friends in the United Kingdom. We have one in Glasgow, and we have one in Nottingham. So I just configured something that gave them the insights that they were looking for. And this is all we're trying to achieve with uh, this type of digital transformation is all through configuration. So I can easily jump back into my all items view, get back, get some of my real estate back. And so one of the things that we would like to do is to focus uh, the efforts of our users to those areas that are most important and need attention. So we'll do that by adding more uh, conditional column formatting to the list, specifically to the end date. The end date is going to, is one of those anchor points throughout the solution, and it's key to all, many of the things that we do. So I hit the down arrow, I go into column settings, I'm going to format this column. I'm going to use conditional formatting, and then I'm going to edit the values. You see right now the rule is for all values, and we see that everything has been marked with this default gray. We'll edit the value, and I'm going to select end date, and then I'm going to choose an operator to compare to, and I'll say the if the end date um, is after today, oops, I did that wrong, if the if the end date is before, that's what I wanted to say. And so now I've, I've highlighted the rows that are in that category that they've expired. But I want to do something more meaningful than that gray fill color. So I will go in and I will edit the more styles. Uh, I'm not worried about a fill color, but what I am worried about is being bold. In the user's face about this, I want to have icons. I want to customize them. I want to have a border, like I'm being very explicit about what is important to my users. So they don't have to scroll and scan and think and look, it's there for them. So we've added value and we'll also complement this by dynamically changing the, the, uh, the status field uh, uh, through, uh, through Power Automate. So they also would like, um, from our requirements, uh, the ability to have some quick insights. So we can generate totals for them. Uh, if I click on the title column and I do the down arrow, we see that we get uh, this new uh, this new totals option and I'll do a count. And as I do that, we see on the bottom of the screen that we have 29 exchange agreements in the pipe right now. And now if I go over to inbound and outbound, I can meet that requirement where they want those simple head counts of who's coming in and who's going out from the university down to totals, you'll notice that there's many more options. That's because where the title was a string, inbound and outbound are numeric, we have get these math calculations that are present by default. So in this case, we'll do a sum, and we see that we have 427 students coming into the university. I'll go back to totals, do another sum, and we'll see that we have 391 of our students coming out. Very good. We've met a lot of our requirements already just by importing the list adding some columns, making a view, and then bringing some additional value through calculated columns and some of that column formatting. We're really doing well, to, and we're on our way to meeting our users' requirements, and we haven't uh, uh, 
inherited, uh, um, or sorry, uh, we're not accumulating technical debt. This is all through configuration. It will survive through upgrades. It's all going very well. And in it's, and it's in our favor. Most people who work in IT, we don't have all of the time to dedicate making brand new uh, uh, power platform applications for everyone. This is a type of, um, you know, uh, pro dev uh, led uh, experience where you 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 guide, you make a solution, you turn it over and you have a low investment on the technology side, but it yields a, a high return. So, excuse me while I recaffeinate. Our users are new to the cloud. They're going to need support and we're going to give them direct support in a very safe place. We've created a Yammer group behind the scenes for them. This will be their safe place to build up their knowledge community. Myself or other members of IT can sit there. It's not intended to replace a, a traditional um, help desk system. What it's meant to do is to be part of that onboarding process where users can um, oh, that was the wrong web part, where the users can be in their safe place, ask questions that we can respond to in a timely manner, and it gives them that forum where they can build up their knowledge community. And for that, Yammer is still a very relevant tool that we see today. So I'm going to add a simple link, and I'm linking from our site. I want to keep them in the context of their digital home. I'm doing that because I... I want them to ease into Office 365. I don't want them jumping here and there and getting lost in a sea of, of, of applications and, and terminology. So uh, we have our link over to the Yammer group that we created. And then, you know, we have this very nice option where we can use icons instead of uh, static uh, uh, images that used to be the case. And so just like that, we've given them their uh, their own knowledge community. And I want to do one other thing. Uh, they they you know, they say they want they, they come to the cloud. They don't want to just do the, the status quo of work and activities. They want new ways of working together as a team. And so to accomplish that, we'll use something very s simple uh, and intuitive like a pl Microsoft planner, uh, a planner board just like sticky notes on your wall or in your office, whatever the case might be. So we'll build that up for them. It's a low investment on our part, but it adds so much value to them because they get new ways of of working together and, and hashing out their processes. So I'll close that, I'll republish, and we really have the makings of a very nice solution. Just to show you the Yammer group, I click the link, I come into Yammer, this is the experience they get. Yammer got a great facelift this year. Uh, give them the point of uh, the site, let them ask questions. There's a, a Q&A feature inside of Yammer that would be beneficial in these scenarios where you're trying to build up you know, a knowledge base, a knowledge, a knowledge community. Here's our, our uh, planner board that we built in. We can see the University of Copenhagen renewal. We can go in and do the work and it's not a, a massive uh, a learning curve for our technology. So our digital home is looking awesome. It's centralized, we've got the data. Now we are going to get into Power Automate to automate some of those mundane tasks. So I hop into my list, I click the Automate option, I go down to Power Automate, I'm going to see my flows. I'm going to create a new flow. Come on, mouse, there we go. And it's going to be a scheduled cloud flow. So this means it's just going to run on a timer. And we'll call this, uh, Thank you, I should have muted that. Scottish Summit Daily. Something to that effect. And it'll run every day. I'll click Create. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the first section that, or the first part of this flow that we're going to build is to uh, set any agreement to expired if the date has passed. So I'm going to add a new action, and this will be a SharePoint get items here we go i'm going to rename this because i'm going to use an additional get items and if i have the same name um, i might get confused i need to grab the website url boom 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 uh, i'm going to set it to a custom value i'm going to paste in the url 
it's going to get the list for me. I need to show advanced options because at this point, I need to filter out only those agreements that have expired. So I'll use the filter query and it'll be based on OData. So we're going to use the end date column. We talked about this being the, uh, uh, the anchor point and we will say uh, it's less than or equal to and I'm putting in two single quotes and then I'm going over to my expression builder and I'm going to say UTC now. Uh, this is a, a date, the current date stamp and um, I'm, I'm going to get into this, uh, this, this habit now of every time I add a step, I'm testing. Uh, I don't want to get too far down into my flow build just to find out that I've made a mistake. Flow checker is great, but sometimes flow checker doesn't uh, understand what you're intending to do. So we've had a successful run. Um, as it's loading, I'll click to download the output and, you know, I'm getting all of this business, which is, yeah, I can't read it, but I know that I got data back and that's good enough for now. Right. Next step, I'm going to update those rows that have expired. So I'll use another SharePoint action, except this time it's going to be update item. Here we go. I'm going to rename this again to expired. And I'm going to put in my list. Oh, that's not the right one. Pardon me. Enter custom value. Paste exchange. It needs the ID column and we're going to get that from the previous action that we executed for get items. And so you will see what happens is because we have a an array type data set, it's going to put this into a loop and that's fine, but you'll see that uh, it, it does change how it looks. So there it is. Uh, it just put it in the loop. I'm going to rename the loop expired. And I'm simply looking for the status value and I'm going to manually change it to expired. So I save that. I'm going to take a quick look at my list. We see that everything is green because uh, our flow hasn't run against it yet. If all goes well, we expect to see two of the rows turn to expired. And let's run a test to see how we did. getting green. Let's go to the list. And we see that every day our flow will come in, interrogate the list, find out what's expired and set it. And so uh, my users come in and now they have this red expired uh, attribute. They have this uh, very in your face uh, expiration date that will draw the visual attention and hopefully prioritize the workload of our users as they're working in the system. So let's get to the next point. And the next point will be to uh, send uh, those those valuable um, reminder emails uh, in advance of the expiration. So we're giving uh, opportunity for uh, our users to, uh, to intervene. So to do that, I'm going to need uh, another date to anchor on. So I'm going to create a variable and this variable will uh, simply take today's date, add 30 days and look for any agreements that uh, that expire on that date. So I'll use the initialize variable command. I will rename this to give it a friendly name. It'll be uh, var reminder date. I'll save that. I'll put that in there. I'll make this a string. And so I'll build the, the expression. I'll come over to the expression builder and I'll say add days. And I'm going to use my friend UTC now plus 30 days. And I'm going to format the date not to have the timestamp. So I'm doing year, month, day. I'll click OK to bring the expression over. Test. At this point, it's just going to give me the date. When I have the date, I'm going to plug it into uh, um, my list so we have a, a test row that we can uh, send a, a reminder email to. And so the date that is going to trigger will be uh, March 27th, 2021. So let's go over to the University of South Australia. We're looking at the end date and there was 3 27 
All right, it's not letting me do that. Three, 27, 21, enter. March 27th, let me double check that date. That looks good. Right, now we can move on to the rest of our flow. So we're going to do another get items command from SharePoint. And this time it will be for any agreement where the expiration date matches our uh, reminder date. So uh, get items, it's a similar pattern that we're building, but a different purpose So SharePoint. Um, you scroll down, uh, come on, get items. Renaming, you see we have multiple uh, like uh, actions and this is reminders. Remind, jeez, I got dyslexia this morning. Going to go into a custom value, paste that in, duh. Sorry folks, give me one second while I get the URL. Here we go. Exchange. Okay, so at this point we need to do another filter query. So our OData filter query will now be end date is equal to, again, single quotes, but I'm going to pop in my var reminder date variable. Flow checker's happy. We'll do another test, make sure we get some data back. Almost there. There we go. Did we get data? We got data. We're in great shape. So the next thing for us to do is now that we have a list of uh, rows that need uh, or a row that needs attention, we'll do the the action of sending them an email. So we'll do Outlook and we'll find send email. There we go. Uh, rename. And as I do that, you could probably envision this being simply modified to, to do something like send it to Teams or send it to any other place. The idea is you, you get data based on a schedule or a trigger, and then you go do something with it. And in these cases, it, it's it's most valuable to, to give them um, early warning. So um, the two section will be uh, the owner, and this is the power of making that conversion that we did from owner as a text string to um, a person field. We get all of this metadata about the person that we can leverage. Uh, I could put in the basic text value, their, their claims information, display name, whatever. You get the whole bit. But I'm sending an email, so I'll use the owner email. It gets thrown into the loop because we're dealing with array data again. Uh, renaming, uh, what is this, reminders. And here you have so many options to uh, customize this message, either with uh, uh, static text like I'm doing right now, um, agreement. Um, but because we have uh, dynamic data, we can we can make this more meaningful and give them information in in context of of what the message is about to to help uh, inform their their next actions. So get items reminder. This is the the data set we're working with. I want title. That's actually the name of the school. And at this point, I can use these rich text editors and say something like I don't know reminder. Turn off bold. Uh, the exchange agreement with, and then I can do the school name again. I can add in more attributes. We might have more than one school, uh, or we might have a school with more than one uh, exchange type of program. Exchange type value uh, is expiring in 30 days. You get you get what I'm going after here. Um, and you know, find more dang it, information here. Thank you, spell check. And then we can throw in the link. And so this gives us a uh, quick access to get back to uh, um, the list item. So uh, unfortunately with this, the send email uh, business, the SharePoint link doesn't come through as a clickable link. You would have to get into this business of uh, viewing the code. I'm not doing that for the purposes of this demo. 
flow checker's happy, I'm saving, I'm testing. If all goes well, I'll get a single email for the, the test row. And then we have one final little step to do in our flow and our solution is built and our users uh, have taken a big step forward to uh, digitally transform their processes. So this is coming through. All right, and now if I hop over into my email, hopefully it's there. And we see, whoops, not LinkedIn. Sorry about that. Come on, you can do it. Uh, exchange agreement expiring soon. We got that dynamic data from uh, uh, University of South Australia. Metadata link, awesome. So really good. The last bit that we wanted to do, it's the last requirement that we had. Our users want to uh, be aware of any uh, updates the, of the, that are happening. Uh, within the process. So we're going to leverage the uh, the comments column and we're just going to put like a system generated message to say that a reminder has been sent. You know, um, it, it lets them know that things are happening and they can add to it as they see fit. And then again, we get to use that dynamic data Reminder email sent on. And sky's the limit of what you can do here. And it'll depend what your, your users want. Test, we're done. And we'll just pop over into our comments field and you can see the the value that you get from being able to append the, the text. Um, well, maybe not in this particular case because no one's adding comments because it's a new build. We got another ping for our email. We'll close that up. We don't need that right now. And uh, if I go to the University of South Australia, uh, uh, I've got our metadata and we'll see that in the comments, uh, this was done. I can edit and add and it's all good. So let's talk about what we did. Uh, we understood their business process. Uh, we reflected it in our, our solution. We were, we were driven by a simplicity of design. We uh, have this new digital home that works for them today and can grow with them tomorrow. We've given them uh, quick access to the areas that they need to, to do to get their work done. We've given them new opportunities to work in a smarter way using Planner. We've given them the, uh, the that safe place to ask any question uh, about their processes and about the tools in a safe place. And over time, as they build up that knowledge community, they are empowering themselves. Our exchange agreement leveraged all of the, the good work that they put in beforehand in them understanding their process. We're able to migrate into this new environment. We're able to use things like a choice column, as simple as it is to reduce the amount of data entry that they have to do. We use things like column formatting to draw visual attention to the, those areas in their, in their work that need prioritization. We get to leverage all of that Azure Active Directory information by uh, converting to that person column. We've done simple things like um, doing calculated columns so they don't have to bust out the calculator every time they need to figure out how many total students they have. We've also used some built-in functionality to look at, you know, giving them those quick insights that they desired for the number of inbound, outbound students, number of agreements that are in play, and you know, finally, that that view that uh, uh, gave them that 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 aggregated view of where they're coming from based on geography. This is not the most high tech solution in the world, but it's one that is a very good stepping stone for our users. We've massively improved their working experience by understanding their requirements, and we've helped to digitally transform them in a in a very short amount of time. Our investment is small, the return is quite large, and our users will feel empowered. Let's go back to the slides and close things out. Thank you so much for attending. The Scottish Summit is one of the, the biggest events of the year, and I'm, I'm so happy that I've been able to uh, uh, attend and, and help and uh, and speak to you today. Uh, it would be great to continue this conversation. Let's connect. Come to my digital home at normyoung.ca. Reach out and let's get connected on LinkedIn. I'd love to know more about you, what you're working on, where you are in the world, and uh, if you have any uh, 
uh, similar technology passions like I do for SharePoint lists and Power Automate. And I'm also on Twitter. So thank you again. I really hope you have a great Scottish summit. Thanks so much for attending.